So, you've got an Xbox Series X or S. Maybe someone bought it for you, maybe you bought it yourself and you're waiting for it to arrive in the post and you're just looking for videos on how to get it set up. Well, this is a super simple guide to get the very best settings for your games and apps and it's gonna take you about five minutes. Let's get into it. This is gonna sound really obvious to most of you, but it's very important we cover it. We need to get the console plugged in. Now I'm gonna demonstrate that with the Xbox Series S one terabyte carbon black model, but the process is identical no matter which of the Xboxes you picked up. There are two cables that you're gonna need, both of which are included in the box. That is the power lead and the HDMI cable. Let's flip the console around and take a look at the back. So here we've got the power connector. So that's where your power cable is gonna go. And over here is the HDMI port, which is where you're gonna plug in the HDMI cable. The other end of your power cable obviously goes into your wall socket and the other end of the HDMI goes into a TV or a monitor. Just look for the HDMI port that's labeled on your TV or monitor and maybe double check your manual to find which ones are HDMI 2.1 so you can get the best possible connection. For example, on our Samsung TV, we found ours here. There is another important port right here, which is the ethernet port, but it is an optional extra if you'd like to add wired internet connection for your Xbox. Your next step is figuring out how to put your console into your setup. They can be stood upright and it looks damn good that way, but if needs be and you're trying to slot it underneath your TV, for example, you can pop them horizontal like this. Just make sure that you keep the vents on either side as well as the back of the console nice and clear of any clutter. That way you get perfect airflow and everything runs really smooth. Now that's taken care of, all that's left to do is press the power button on the front of your console and let the game begin almost right we've moved over here because we've got our console set up with our TV we turn them on and the first thing you'll see is this screen which is prompting us to download the Xbox app on our smartphone don't be alarmed it's super easy plus the app is totally free once you've got it just open it up and select set up a console and then fire in this code here and it will connect your app with your console just like that bear in mind though your code might be different to mine so don't copy that one all of the next few steps you're gonna spend on your phone where it's gonna walk you through what language and location you like to set for your console, the Wi-Fi connection in your home that you'd like to connect to for your Xbox, or if you are gonna use that wired connection we mentioned earlier, pop in the password for that. And now my console's online. See? The app makes it super easy and it really is the best way to get your console connected as well as start the updates that you're gonna need to play online. You can even go through some of the more complex features like if you'd like to enable remote features to allow you to play through the cloud, as well as adding the ability to connect your Discord account so you can chat with your friends on there as well. But we'll cover that in just a little bit. By now, your screen should look a bit like this, but it is telling us that we can continue setting up on our mobile device. The mobile app's gonna ask you if you'd like to sign in with an Xbox account. Now, you can do this if you've upgraded from an Xbox One or if this is maybe a secondary console you're setting up, and it will give you access to all of the games on your account already. If you don't have an Xbox account, it's really simple to sign up for it, and at that point, it will let you access the Microsoft Store for games, apps, movies, whatever you like. One super important feature that it's gonna ask you about is if you'd like to set this or change it to your home Xbox. If you do enable this, it means that anyone that signs in on this Xbox can access your entire library, including your Game Pass subscription. But if it is your first ever Xbox, just set it as your home because this is gonna be your primary place to play games and watch movies. For those of you with little ones in the house, you can also add family members to the console. We'll cover those settings in just a little bit. The next thing the mobile app asks you is if you'd like to give your console a name. I'd highly recommend that you be quite specific with it because if you've got multiple consoles in your home or across multiple homes or places that you visit, it's gonna help you narrow down which ones you want to download specific games on when you use the mobile app to update your console. Plus, just kind of cute to give it a little nickname. So this one's gonna be Philip Lindstrom. Welcome to the world, Philip. Okay, next step is adding some actual content. So it's asking if we'd like to add any of our favorite entertainment apps. You can see we've got options for Spotify, Disney+, Plus, Crunchyroll, Apple Music, Apple TV, and even just film and movies from Windows. I love a bit of Star Wars, so we're definitely installing Disney+. Plus. I've got a Spotify subscription, so that way I can listen to some music while I play some games. The next screen might not be visible for everyone, especially if it's your first ever Xbox. If you owned one before, you can copy the settings from that device over to this one, making your setup even quicker. For now though, we're gonna start fresh and just set this one up as if it was our first ever Xbox. Then we get another family setting asking us, will this console be used by kids? And because we're gonna cover some family settings later on in the video, I'm gonna say yes, 
but that's up to you. If you are adding family members, it's gonna prompt you to get the Xbox Family Settings app. There's a link there that will take you to the App Store or the Play Store where you can download the Xbox Family Settings app. Once you've got that, you log in with your Microsoft account and start adding family members that you'd like to control the settings for. I know that seemed like a lot, but honestly, the phone app makes it so much easier. If you prefer, you can do all of those settings on the console itself. The only thing you're gonna need is a controller, which luckily there's one bundled in with your console, so sorted. But how do you get that controller connected? Well, let me show you. Grab your controller and a couple of AA batteries, which you should have gotten in the box as well, pop them in the back and then hit the Xbox button like that. The controller that comes in the box is already paired to your console, but if you wanted to add additional, the next thing you need to do is press the pair button on your controller, the pair button on your Xbox, wait for a few seconds, and then they'll be linked. There's a couple of other questions the console needs to confirm with us regarding data protection. Depending on the console that you bought, some of them actually come bundled in with extra content. This is the Series S starter bundle, and it comes with three months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which is very nice indeed. Some of them have games and whatnot, so you're gonna wanna check how you're gonna deal with this extra content. For example, I could just claim it for my account right now, or I could even claim it for a different account, or if I'm not too sure what I wanna do with it yet, I could just decide later, which is what I'm gonna do. And there's our Xbox Home, and look at that, the two apps that I decided to install on the mobile app are already there for me, ready to log in. Bit of Star Wars? All right, we'll get on with the console, for sure. At this point, most of you are probably dying to jump into some of your favorite games, but if you are part of a gaming family, then you probably wanna check out those family settings that we mentioned earlier. Those can be found in the settings app, and then under account, and family settings. In here, you're gonna find a bevy of options that will allow you to control things like the types of content that people in your family can see, as well as authorizing things like payments without needing to request the parent's permission, or even just topping up credit for your children or whoever to be able to spend on whatever game they want. I will say though that I think the family settings app on your phone is a much quicker way of sorting all of this out. So maybe check it out there first, but it's good to know that you can access it on your console as well if you need to. But why don't we get into some really juicy console settings that optimize your video and audio quality. Head back into settings and go to your TV and display options. And right here you can see we've got 4K 120 enabled by default on our TV. However, you might need to play around with your own TV settings based on the spec of that device that you're using. But for us, we've got that full HDMI 2.1 compatibility, giving us that full fat 4K and 120 Hertz refresh rate. If you're unsure of what your TV can actually output, it's best to check the 4K TV details in setup. This is gonna give you a breakdown of all different kinds of signals and resolutions that your TV can handle and help you pick out the best option for you. In general, you want the best possible resolution, which in our case is 4K, but you might see options like 1080p or even 1440p. And you also want the best refresh rate. In our case, that's 120 hertz, but 60 hertz and a 4K resolution is still quite a common standard to see on most TVs. So just pick whichever of those you can max out and go from there. If you wanna get the best possible picture out of your TV, you need to head into Calibrate TV, which is gonna give you a bunch of different color combinations, which will help you pick out the best contrast, brightness, as well as HDMI black level options to choose to get the picture just right for gaming and for movies. Honestly, I know all of these diagrams and loads of words look really complicated, but take your time with it. There's no time limit. You don't have to rush. Just read through it all, follow the instructions, and it will just guide you to getting that perfect picture. Unfortunately, I can't really give you some basic settings that just work for every TV because every TV panel is different to each other and they require a bit more tuning here or there. But at the end of it, you're gonna come out with the best possible picture, color, accuracy, and that is what we're here for at the end of the day. So go through it and eventually you're done. Now, the other side of your gaming and movie experience is audio. So to get that dialed in just right, you wanna to head to volume and audio output. In here, we've got different options for configuring how we want our sound to be passed through the different devices that you might have in your home cinema system or even just deciding how you want the headset audio to affect your TV speakers. The options that you're gonna see are probably gonna be different to what we have available because currently our Xbox is plugged into our TV and we're just using the TV speakers because they're actually pretty good on this Samsung TV. But for you, if you've got a soundbar connected or maybe like a 5.1 surround sound system connected to your TV as well, you'll probably see some extra options under speaker audio that you'll wanna consider. But honestly, just pick the options and if it's coming through right and sounds good, you've probably nailed it. Here's a cheeky little saying if you want to avoid waking up the entire house when you turn your Xbox on, and that is changing the power chime to off. That way when you press the power button, dead silent. Same could be said of mute startup sounds, which will totally remove all of the audio when you're booting up your Xbox and you see the Xbox logo. 
I mentioned Discord earlier, and it's a great social platform for connecting to other gamers. But with Xbox, you can also use some of its voice features too. You can even stream your gameplay to the Discord servers that you're a part of, which is a really cool feature, just sharing the moment with all your mates. If you want to enable that, all you've got to do is head into settings, then go onto account, and then linked social accounts. From here, there's gonna be a bunch of different social platforms that you can join with your Xbox account, which you're gonna go through all of those that you'd like to, but Discord's the one we're gonna focus on here. The other thing you're gonna need is the Discord app on your phone. So hit the App Store or the Play Store, get it downloaded and get logged in. Log into your account, swipe over and hit the cog, access your connections, and at the very top right, there's Add. From here, you should be able to scroll down and find Xbox. First thing it's gonna ask you to do is to sign in with your Xbox account, so make sure you remember your password and all that jazz. Discord's gonna prompt you to have the Xbox mobile app installed, which you already do because you set up a console with it. Then you're all done. So next time I go in here, I can see now that it should be nice and linked, perfect. When you're ready to access Discord to chat with your mates or stream to a Discord server, just bring up the guide, head over to parties and chats, and Discord is just right there for talk and stream. Now this Xbox is fully set up and ready for some games, I guess. So I'm gonna get some downloaded. In the meantime, why don't you check out our other videos for some other setup tips, how to get the most out of your Xbox, your controllers, as well as what new Game Pass games are coming out so you can keep an eye on all the beautiful things you're about to play on your brand new Xbox. Make sure you hit the sub and drop a like as well, and we'll see you in the very next video. Bye.